Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Peachy and this is Plant and Style. So in today's video, I'm very excited to show you guys updates on all of my plants because I had to leave them for a full month. So if you're new into this channel and you have not seen my last video, I'll leave the link up here so you guys can check it out anytime. So one question that you might have is how did I prepare my plants to make sure they are well taken care of while I was gone? Well, luckily, my husband had to stay behind because I have um, all my plants in um, semi-hydroponics, in pond, lechuza pond specifically, and in a self-watering setup. Plant care became such a breeze, very easy for my non-plant person husband. So yeah it made everything very easy for him to do all he had to do really is to refill my reservoir put some water in it and done and because some of my pots are big already and some of my plants are established already they didn't really need to be refilled at all like it lasted for a whole month and even more no problem so that's one upside of using lechuza pond or semi hydroponics in general in self watering pot so after 30 days i'm happy to report that we only had one casualty and that's only because my husband got confused uh, my poor alocasia micolitsiana was next to my alocasia golden bone so he thought it was just one plant and he refilled one and not the other so it was an honest mistake so he was off the hook so anyhow overall he did very well and i'm very very grateful this was the exact situation that i have been preparing for for a while after switching all of my plants into a semi hydroponic setup, you know, even for a non plant person who knows nothing about taking care of plants, was able to take care of my plants and keep them happy while I was gone. And I'm so glad that I had everything, all my plants in this convenient setup. Two thumbs up, definitely. <laughs> so, what exactly did I do before I left? I made sure that all of my reservoirs are refilled to its maximum capacity and i also added um, nutrients because you know how lechuza pond or pond in general don't have nutrients in it you have to supplement so that your plants can have food because they do need food to live just like us which i do actually um, every other watering so my husband doesn't need to do all that i've had that taken care of before i left so all he needed to do is water them with just regular tap water which is what i use and that's really it you know my grow lights and fans are all automated so he didn't have to do anything about that apart from downloading the same app that i have where i can control my lights and fans anywhere or anytime he did it so that just in case there's like technical issues or power outage he is able to restart it himself and without further ado let's go look at some plants so we are starting in our living room and this is the overview of how things are going right now and i have mostly my anthuriums here because i am mostly in love with them so i want to see them uh, more often and they really look great on display as well so yeah the source of lighting here is my soul tech highland track light that i gotten this year only i've upgraded from my clamp lights that i've used over the years and i am so so happy that i was able to do that it's not sponsored but yeah i would love for them to sponsor me though <laughs> hint hint and then i also have a west facing window over here but as you can see right now 
um, during winter season, win winter time, it's not really helping that much. So I do supplement with grow lights for the most part, for most of the day. And I also have Barina lights inside my um, greenhouse cabinets as well. So yeah, we are going to start in this beauty right here. This is my Alocasia Sandariana. It didn't used to be up here. It used to be out the outdoor on our porch actually. And because it's gotten too cold outside, I've decided to bring it in for the winter. And it actually flowered for me and my husband didn't know what to do about it and he didn't tell me so it took all of the energy obviously so this is the latest leaf that it came with it's a lot smaller because of that then what else it's not gonna be a plant tour entirely because it's a lot and it was, this video is gonna take forever this um, Anthurium Metallicum over here so this was the leaf that hardened off while I was gone as you can see it's got a, a mechanical damage it's got a hole there but it's fine and the newest leaf that came after that is this one and it also has a mechanical damage because it was stuck in behind this plants and against the wall so I'm still very grateful because this leaf is huge and it's the biggest leaf so far in this plant that it has given me and I'm so so happy that it's doing all this during this winter time and ambient humidity as well. So on the very top right here, the Anthurium polydiflorum is not looking its best it's uh it's i'm having troubles with gutation right here so as you can see it's looking wet like that and it'll go away eventually but sometimes it leaves damages on the leaf just like the previous ones right there and um still trying to figure out um how to care for it better here this is my anthurium luxurian cross with forgetii and this is the newest leaf that it had again so it's a little bit mangled as well but which sucks because as you can see it's got the perfect forgetii lobe and it's at the same time it's got the luxuriant texture that I really love but it's still beautiful um, in its own way it's just a little torn here and there because of the way it unfurled being stuck behind and um, so yeah they're very very delicate if you know about anthuriums they cannot be touching anything when they are emerging so apart from that, I would like to give an update on um, my first um, inflorescence that I hybridized. The pollen donor is right behind there. It's the same. It's this dark forgetii right there from Echogenera. And as you can see, it's forming some berries which i'm really really excited about and it just happened that again the inflorescence came at the right time it's in sync with the same pollen parent so i figured might as well do it one more time on this new inflorescence so i already did that yesterday i believe i did it yesterday so i just basically um, rub my fingers and took the pollen from from this pawpaw right here and rub it on this inflorescence right here which is the mama everything else up there are looking great my Hoya Bella has lost some leaves and I think that's due to not getting enough lighting I believe it's still pretty pretty happy <laughs> the rest of the plants so if you notice there are three different varieties in one pot there but 
yeah, the one with the Lida buoy is the one that's struggling a little bit, but that's fine. It's got some new growth now, so hopefully it's happy now. So this one right here is one problem that I have and I'm trying to figure out if it's like some fungal issue or spider mite damage, whatever it is. But that's the first leaf that came out of this is actually a dark form um, Ace of Spade from Novelty G and I don't recall showing you guys this one yet because it was in a it was in my rehab cabinet but i've decided to take it out of the cabinet and let it get used to ambient humidity and this is the first leaf that came out of it and it was actually facing the wall and i'm not sure if it's light it lacked light during unfurling so but i'm just gonna I'm just keeping an eye on, eye on it right now. And yeah, it's still a work in progress, I must say. And this one right here is my Anthurium Pure Papillolaminum. And the newest leaf um, before that is this one. And as you can see, it's got its own problems as well. And if you look closely, closely it's looking like it's got the same issue over here with the ace of spade these two plants actually came from the same cellar so i am still investigating on what could it be and if, if it's like some kind of sickness i'm still doing my research but if you do have any idea what this is Please do leave it in the comments down below because I would appreciate it and that would give me, um, save me so much time if you do so. I've also, this leaf right here had suffered from spider mites as well and this was one of the original leaves that it came with. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a problem plant at the moment this one and the ace of spade which are two of my top most expensive anthuriums in this collection sadly but uh i'm not losing hope just yet i'm you know um it's a learning in process yeah um i'm gonna figure it out hopefully with your help guys so don't be shy to throw in some help. And then my Anthurium Crystallinum right here. And yes, this is a Crystallinum, but for some reason, it's showing a forgetty eye lobe. So I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, I'm not sure if it's just a mutation or it actually has forgetty eye blood in here him so but he's happy as you can see it has thrown this inflorescence that's up against the ceiling now and it's looking happy so i'm not even gonna move it just yet so um it's still growing and it's not receptive or anything yet so i'm just gonna leave it alone for now and since i don't have a pollen parent at the moment unless my forgetii up there would produce more pollen but i don't know exactly how they would do it since i've already harvested the pollen if it would throw more pollen that would be awesome and then most of my anthuriums here are pretty happy that's my crystallinum original OG crystallinum over there in the corner in a big bucket of lechuza pond and the queens I have two queens over here that are not looking its finest anymore <laughs> and that's because I underwatered this one it had a couple of days of empty reservoir and soon after that it crisped up down here so um, hopefully that was the case and um, apart from that the newest leaf over there it's hard to see 
is fine. It's not yellowing just yet, although it has some some kind of damage right there. It's still looking fine for me. And my other um, Queen Anthurium right here is looking nice. And yeah, I love that lobe that she has. And this one was from um, Equigenera. Over here is my the easiest philodendron, truly. Even when it's velvety and everything, but this is my philodendron rubri juvenile, all or the uh, El Choco Red. This is the newest leaf. It's still. Um, hardening and expanding so I'm assuming it's going to be bigger than this because this was the leaf before that and it's still expanding as you can see so it it's not getting a lot of light so the red is not as pronounced as it used to be but she's happy otherwise and looking massive and gorgeous very very easy going very thirsty plant that's one thing i've noticed about him and then we have another sad anthurium over here this is my anthurium regal and i've waited so long for this new leaf but unfortunately it was actually on on this spot before i left but when i came back i saw that new leaf is already touching the ceiling hence the damages that it has right now so it just started hardening here when i put it down here on this spot it's not the permanent spot that i have for it yet but i'm still um reorganizing at the moment but i am so happy because even though it's it's crooked and a little bit damaged it's you can see how big it would have been don't forget that this is also its first leaf so when it comes to anthurium the first leaf is usually weird so i cannot wait for the next leaf so hopefully the next leaf is going to be perfect but who knows right this is anthurium regal after all and it's known to be very sensitive and finicky so um i want to show one thing that is doing mighty mighty fine if it would let me hold on excuse me regal so this is my monstera adansonii tricolor and it is looking fabulous just extended its pole and this is the leaf that uh that new leaf and it's a little small now because i was a little late with the extension but hopefully the next one will be big again because the leaf before that is already looking pretty pretty big and yeah i love i really love the genetics on this one as you can see it's not browning anymore it did brown before in the beginning when i first took it out of the cabinet but right now it's very happy in ambient and um, not a lot of lighting either so it's just the natural light from from the window and a little bit of the soul tech highland from up above so very very cool over here let's not forget my beautiful monstera thigh constellation my number one plant basically because we we go way back and so far um the newest leaf right here is the one that it has given already before i left and it didn't give me any more after that and um, it has not moved at all for the last month and a half and maybe it's because it's winter and it's not growing season um i don't know but it does get it its own highland light right there this one is directly on this plant and um, since i used this 
grow light, it stopped browning. I've had issues like many others about the white variegation crisping and browning. So I did have that issue on this plant as well because of the higher amount of white variegation or cream variegation that it has. But I am just glad that it stopped. <laughs> It's not doing that anymore, so I'm truly afraid to move it or to do anything drastically to it just yet. So I'm gonna just keep an eye on it, I guess. Yeah, that's all I could do really. And over here is my Schismatoglottis wallichii that is variegated. And this one has grown a bunch of pops and a lot more variegated pops as you can see right here but just like any other highly variegated plant it's also browning it was browning and I think that's it. that was due to it drying up at one point as well this plant is very thirsty and it does not tolerate being thirsty at any time so yeah it's best to keep this one watered or moist at all times it's got some baby pups that i can separate um eventually i'm gonna wait for them to get bigger because i've read how sensitive they can be so the leaves would tend to like melt down they would have they'll throw a tantrum at you and it did it for me in the beginning when i took it out of a greenhouse cabinet but right now it's alive and happy enough i think so i'm gonna leave it alone for now until next growing season spring oh yeah my obovada splash is looking fabulous over here its uh, leaves used to come like this all wrinkly and bleach and since moving it into this spot it's starting to show some round and plump splashy and dark oh i adore this plant so much so this is my fabricor greenhouse ikea Fabricor greenhouse and it's housing most of my alocasia at the minute and some syngoniums and the star in this cabinet or one of the stars actually because a lot of these alocasias are doing great in here and um yeah thank god and <laughs> This one right here is so gorgeous right now. Oh, oh I'm this right here. So anyways, this is my Alocasia poly bambino, which is the dwarf version of the Alocasia um, poly. And oh my god, I started this plant as a teeny tiny seedling and now it's looking great and it's showing very very nice variegation that sometimes are pink and purple even so every single leaf that comes out of this plant is variegated now and i remember how it used to be it not so variegated but now it's turned around completely like what a beautiful specimen and I'm so so glad to have it in my collection and another one that I grew from a single leaf seedling and I got this locally and the original leaf is already gone it's melted away but all four leaves are beautifully very except for this one but this is the newest leaf it's so gorgeous this is by the way my alocasia silver dragon and what else do i have here um this is my syngonium scrambled egg that was reverting but now the variegation is coming back and i'm so glad see the last two leaves have some kind of variegation i know it's not much but it is something <laughs> 
and the new leaf is looking light which is a good sign so yeah this is my syngonium scrambled eggs which is basically the um, when land the eye variegated when land the eye and I have five corms that I took out from my um, alocasia fry deck and as you can see two of them have sprouted and my husband did a great job keeping these um, constantly moist as I've instructed them because they are just corms you know and they require a lot of moisture from the substrate so that substrate is the fluval stratum and I did test out and put one in um, straight to pond and so far it's got some kind of growth in there hopefully you can see it but it does trust me so yeah I'm quite happy if it um, grows successfully um, then I don't have to go through all this you know but oh my goodness I am so glad look at this so cute Anyways, what else do we have here? This is alocasia. I think this is alocasia bisma. I am not sure if that's the ID. And I got this for free as a rehab plant. And this is the newest leaf. And it's so freaking gorgeous. And it's actually really firm as well. I am so so happy that I was able to keep this one alive. Look at how silver that is. It's so nice. Yeah, uh, I love this one. Yeah, this one is truly silvery. It's like even metallic somehow. And it's coming up with a new leaf as well. So I'm glad to have that as well. And for free even this is a um this one is a macro riza allocation macro riza and not doing so well but it's got a pop right there so okay and then behind there is actually looking great <laughs> this one is odora allocation odora and it's coming up with a new leaf and it's also there's also two pops there like i assume the corms just grew grew right there and yeah i'm just gonna keep it there so it becomes bushier than how it is now my cupria is sizing up finally i got this one as a tiny tiny plant as well just like this at the bottom and it also has actually this one's i grew from corn and i just added it at the bottom so here is my amazonica um variegated amazonica but only one leaf is showing variegation at the moment um i got this from sam's hoyas as a rehab kind of very cheap and I'm just gambling on the variegation on this, but so far, no good. <laughs> but only time will tell, and there's also a new leaf, so who knows, right? And then behind here is my gorgeous, gorgeous fry deck that is actually looking sad. And, um, no, I'm also seeing some webbing oh no hopefully it's oh no it might have some spider mites i switched the cabinet on this one and mm, no i might have to check it further later but yeah it's it's got some beautiful variegation and um yeah every leaf is so beautiful on this one so what is that webbing hopefully that web i don't see any spider mites on it so oh no hopefully it's okay yeah i just did take out the corms that i am growing right now this is the mom for that but the roots are looking healthy as you can see so i might have to 
check it out and maybe give it a rinse just in case so yeah that's it for now in this Fabricor Ikea greenhouse cabinet so I forgot about my Anthorium VCI narrow form right here is coming up with a new leaf and I'm excited to see that one so yeah this one is very easy for me right now as well and um, this Anthorium Winlingery is coming in with a spike it's hard to see but yeah it's looking like there is some movement on the spike as well so hopefully it will give me a new leaf as well because so far I've only gotten this one leaf and yeah I can't wait to see a new leaf <laughs> from here and moving on to this so this is my anthorium seedling cabinet and even though it's winter every single plant not probably every single but most of the plants in here are giving me some new emergent leaf and I couldn't be happier and look at that at the very top that pink orange one right there is actually Anthorium Dark Phoenix crossed with Anthorium Portile from North Shore Tropical so this one is looking really leggy so I'm probably taking the top cut over here because the bottom leaves are a bit damaged from the shipment so I think I'm going to propagate the one, this one so I have um, two plants so more chances of growing them and then we have this is a red crystal right here and this one right here is a dock block cross with papilla laminum they're looking great and this is another dock block cross with papilla laminum but it looks different it's looking more elongated but veiny just like dock block so it's really very interesting how two sibling plants can vary from each other with different characteristics and different looks you know uh, on the back right here is actually a Dresslerai hybrid with um, a Papillilaminum, a Carla dress actually, Carla Dresslerai cross with Papillilaminum of some sort. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's looking very elongated as well. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to growing this one out and it's got some pink veins as well and speaking of pink veins this one is the cutest of them all this is one of my favorite anthurium seedling anthurium in general for sure this is my anthurium king of spades from um, arid market that I got for free and oh my god the pink veins is actually staying on the leaf what the heck that is just amazing and speaking of amazing this plant right here is my paplox this is papillilaminum cross with luxuriant and yeah it's got a new spike of new leaf right there and can we just appreciate that root porn right there that is just fuzzy and happy right there and yeah lots and lots of new emergent leaf for sure and yeah i can't wait to see them mature because it's definitely starting to show some different characteristics this one right here by the way is a Doriaki cross with Anthorium BVEP or the Black Velvet Eastern Panama and yeah um yeah it's got a new spike coming in as well so yeah definitely can't wait to see this one as a mature specimen as well and last but 
not to least are my seedlings that I grew. I germinated from seeds. These are all NSE red crystals. And as you can see, they are growing beautifully. Some are growing slower than the others. And these are all, these all came from the same parent. And like I said, the characteristics actually differ from each other so i'm waiting to see more of their characters before i would probably sell them because i cannot house so many red crystal you know so yeah and i think that's it for these anthorium um, seedling cabinet Moving on to one of my Hoya cabinets. This is my Mills Bow Wide and it sits in the living room as well and I will give you guys um, more detailed updates on all of my Hoyas but just an overview for now on how they are looking but as you can see they all seem happy and there's a lot of new growth especially and oh my god I just want to mention this this Wilbur Graves Russia right there how purple it is right now it's crazy and amazing I grew this from two leaf um, two node so now the two leaf has how many like close to 10 leaves now which I'm so so happy about and yeah I can't wait to grow this one out as you can see it's looking mighty mighty fine currently and yeah lots and lots of new growths and yeah I can't wait to talk about them one by one and then down here we have some variegated philodendrons and more Hoyas. And this one right here is my Red Anderson from Aeroid Market. My collaboration with them. I got this one for free. And look, it has given a pop that is beautifully variegated as well. The new leaf is actually half moon. And yeah, this plant is showing great, great variegation and I'm so happy about it. This one right here is my Philodendron Pedatum. And I actually chopped this one because it was throwing some full variegation just like this. Look, it's about to melt away and and it's also is growing a pop down there another new growth and this is the newest leaf that it has it's finally maturing this one took a while to grow my goodness such a slow grower and this one right here though is worth mentioning this is my hoya coriacea I don't know if it's called silver or splash but I just got it as a Corea CA and it started um, as a two leaf cutting down here at the bottom and it was already rooted when I purchased this and since then it grew two sets of newer leaves and look at the newest leaf that it gave me it is ginormous i cannot believe that this is so big compared to the original leaf you see it's just like a third of my palm and this one is a whole palm <laughs> and my hoya thomsonii that i've combined a splashy um thomsonii and a regular one and oh my goodness, it's growing. Look at that. How pretty. And um, I've trellised it. And the tip actually dried off. I need to um, cut that off. But I already, I can see new, new growth 
right there as well so I think it's happy this is my variegated hibiscus that I got as a um, rehab it was pretty much a stick only down here with like very small leaves and look at it now it looks like a bonsai oh my god I I think I should turn it into a bonsai but I'm just leaving it alone and it seems very happy the colors are just magnificent on this plant you can have like all kinds of colors the newest leaf can be very very pink as well oh, this one is nice this one's still very very new right there but just like this one how gorgeous is that oh my god this plant is amazing i know i don't see this very often at all in anyone's um collection but um i know that this is supposed to be like an outdoor plant but i'm not quite sure of how well it's gonna like my environment i live in berkeley so it gets very cold sometimes but not freezing cold so we don't get any snow so i'm gonna try next um summer i'm gonna try to take it out and acclimate it outside because i know this plant requires a lot of sunlight and it might even tolerate um or love direct sunlight so yeah i'm definitely going to try that but not right now because it's still very cold and it's still very young i definitely don't want to touch it right now that it's very very happy yeah i just love the way it looks currently oh my goodness this is one of my favorites at the moment yeah variegated hibiscus i wonder if i'm able to flower this plant and I wonder if the flower is going to be variegated as well. Ooh, that is something to look forward to. And then this is my Hoya Lacunosa with the inner variegation. It's growing very, very nicely and very, very cute, if I must say. And then my poor Hoya Polynura albo that i have propagated twice is finally growing back and um i've chopped the bottom right there as you can see and it didn't grow anything from that vine anymore it's like pissed off because that was the second time that i chopped them so he's like screw you probably <laughs> Like, I'm not going to grow anymore that you're just going to sell. So, yeah, guilty. I did sell a lot of the cuttings. And I still have one more, by the way, right here. I have one leftover cutting before I left. And it actually grew a set of leaves. But I don't think that I'm going to sell that one. I think I'm actually going to combine it with this one because it's time to make it look pretty again. But anyways... Everything else is looking fabulous. My New Guinea ghost back there is just chilling. It's finally growing. I had problems with it before, but now I can see that it's growing just fine. Just there, not getting super duper highlight like it used to be, but it's growing bigger leaves and still silvery though. So I'm not mad about it. This is my silver dollar that I grew from two leaf. This one was from um, Sam's Hoyas as well. And it actually, I grew this with three leaves. It started with three leaves and it grew this leaf for me. This one is the growth um, from my care and it has this new vine which I actually snapped the two new leaves which sucks but I think I did that by accident yeah so that's it for now on this Hoya mo or mostly Hoya Hoya cabinet right here and here we are in our bedroom and 
in all honesty i am starting to feel overwhelmed with this collection because everything is just growing so fast and i have tons of propagations that i need to get rid of so i am in the process of separating the plants that i am going to purge sometime soon <laughs> but yeah i just cannot um get myself to actually do it just yet i'm just procrastinating as usual but yeah it's starting to get overwhelming as you can see it's just so much and yeah <laughs> but there are a lot of new growths as you can see one of them the most special one right now and i'm so so happy about is this beautiful monstera borsigiana oria right here that i used to have troubles with um yellowing variegated parts just like so but since moving in this room and actually facing the Barina standing grow light that I've told you before, it actually loves that light. And um, this one right here, which I turned off right now because it's just um, distracting. It's too much light for you guys. So I know how everyone, including me, struggles with this kind of variegation, the yellow variegation. So yeah, I am afraid to move it right now because any drastic change they get, they will not forgive you. So just be mindful about that. I've learned the hard way myself. So yeah, I'm happy to report that she has found its happiness and i'm grateful about it meanwhile this monstera elbow right here is turning into a bushy bushy beautifully variegated this one is very easy going i must say look it's thrown a new leaf that i can't wait to see but it's looking highly variegated as well and this one it, the second vine so yeah i do have two vines here that i've propagated from all this is from one mid cutting <laughs> that i turned into a beast as you can see i'm so excited this is my original plant um, first rare plant purchase and I know I understand that it's going down in prices right now but I have no plans on getting rid of it anytime soon as you can see because it's looking gorgeous at the minute and I'm just enjoying this beast for now and look the other vine is also throwing a looks like already has two fenestration yay it's maturing and it's gonna fill this empty spot right here so it's gonna turn into a massive beautiful variegated monstera tree and i cannot be more excited about it my variegated syngonium chia pens however is looking like it's getting less and less variegation i was worried when this half moon right here um came out that it could go either way like less variegation or more variegation so like super variegated or not so variegated and it's looking like we're getting the reverted um direction at the minute but i will not be hesitating to propagate this one because it's a syngonium and yeah, I couldn't be more excited on what it has to offer after I chopped it off because it's known to be easily propagated. And yeah, maybe we'll get more plants out of it in the future. So right now, I'm just letting it chill for the moment. When we see what this leaf turns into, I think that will be the, the time that I'm going to cut it so you're supposed to cut it 
from the last highly variegated leaf which is this one so yeah it will be a good time to do so so maybe i'll show you guys how i do it and another update on my philodendron lanochrysum right here my beautiful mature one has lesser um leaf now so i've decided to propagate it as well this just happened um, a couple of days ago as you can see over here i've i've chopped it here this is the extent of the chop all the way down here because there is an empty node over here so i've actually cut it and left it in the pole and i'm hoping to get growth even just with the pole even though it's not attached to the substrate because they do that you know they don't really need a whole substrate they can just grow in the moss pole as long as keeping the moss moist and add fertilizer in it nutrients in it and which is how i grow them so it is well established and attached to the pole so i'm just hoping that it would grow as you can see there is a growth eye over here and so it becomes more bushy compared to how leggy it looks right now so the same way over here by chopping here it will encourage growth from other nodes like as you can see over here there is a growth eye here and another growth eye here so there is a greater chance that these will activate and have a bushier plant and hopefully a bigger leaf as well. This um, sodoroy right here is growing beautifully in ambient and it's starting to size up as well. This is still in my DIY moss pole and it's looking like it's going to need a new pole very soon as well. So this is up for a repot as well and then over here is my pink princess that is not so variegated and the last two leaves that it grew while i was away are a bit wonky <laughs> a bit damaged which gives me a suspicion of a thrip maybe thrip damage because there's also discoloration over there as you can see but i could be wrong hopefully i'm wrong but upon checking on this new leaf it's looking perfect right now so i'm gonna wait and then we have what else my monstera adansonii mint over here that i have propped and replanted to itself to make it bushy as now growing well see the top cut has a new growth right there and i was a little late with the extension of the moss poles that's why this this newest leaf is looking very small but that's okay the new leaf is on its way out and the other vine has a new leaf as well over there so yeah I'm still holding on to that plant because it's somewhat special. It came from, um, I consider a friend and it has, you know, some sentimental value to me, <laughs> basically. And over here, I have added, I had spare Barina um, lights that I took out of my cabinet. So I decided to put it on that shelf that will help with this chaotic plant collection over here <laughs> i think i am less and less excited about my philodendrons at the minute because of the maintenance they say that it's very easy to grow and easy to maintain it's truly not because most of them require moss poles which is the true definition of not easy at all but i do enjoy and i'm 
going to keep this philodendron florida beauty right here that i started as a very tiny cutting and it's finally has lobes and it's growing and it's really beautiful now so i'm gonna keep this one and um, this florida ghost as well is starting to mature i love when the petioles turn red and orange because it's finally getting enough lighting as well uh, this philodendron domesticum is throwing a bunch of fully variegated leaves so that's not good again because of this half moon thing now in this case it went on the fully variegated direction which is not good either so that's probably gonna get um, propagated sometime soon this philodendron upi has grown this massive leaf i got this as a teeny tiny tc seedling i don't know if you call it seedling but a tc plant that is just this big and now it has this gorgeous leaf so yeah this one needs an upgrade on its moss pole as well and it's also i just recently washed this i mean wiped this because it has a lot of extra flora nectarines which is causing all that dots right there and damages on the leaf so that's that and all of my syngoniums are looking crappy at the moment and it's like my worst plant collection at the minute so yeah i'm probably gonna get rid of all of them apart from my syngonium chia pens which is a syngonium but definitely does not look like a syngonium which is why i'm going to keep it and then this is the other pink princess that i was telling you about that has more interesting and beautiful colors and it's looking like one of one of those marble king whatever they call it nowadays that is pink princess as well but this was from a gabriella plants lineage according to um, my seller so i got it as a really tiny um, cutting and yeah i'm excited to grow this one out actually more than the other one and then a few more propagations of what is this is a uh, strawberry shake that i'm struggling with i have another strawberry shake that is not maturing at all so yeah i'm done with all this philodendrons they're just a headache sometimes um this one right here is the philodendron esmeral dense narrow and yeah this one is looking fine i guess this is the new leaf that it has from being out of the cabinet so hopefully we'll get some longer growth which i'm hoping to get from this plant and then the hanging plants are doing great i'm getting light from this makeshift this is a grow light i think that's a sansi grow light above there in my um lamp uh i don't know what you call that kind of lamp my spiritual sanctity is chilling up there and yeah i think it's doing fine out of the cabinet as well and it's just there for now it's not its permanent resident so yeah and of course my hoya cabinet is looking gorgeous it does need some maintenance as you can see my pots are algae ridden at the moment because of being gone for a while so they do require some rinsing and cleaning up and yeah so that's uh, one of my to-do list but um you can see oh my god my hushka Liana. hold on let me open it for you I'm going to take you in for a little peek and overview of my, oh, I love this cabinet. This cabinet houses 
most of my Hoyas and they are just loving the environment in here. Oh my god, this Hoshkeliana is stuck. But look at the colors. Oh my god, it's beautiful. I love it when they turn pink like that when the new leaves turn come in pink like that and i propagated it and planted it to itself so i can see some cuttings are starting to grow now so hopefully we'll get a bushier plant pretty soon but right now it's looking cute and yeah it does need some cleaning as well and then oh my god this this one is my Hoya Glabra Schlechter that uh, it grew this. It's all curly because it was stuck right in there when it was growing. So it did not have a full expansion basically. So it's all wrinkled. It's now hardened and it just stayed wrinkled so this one right here is a new growth and it's still expanding so i'm trying to like give it some room to grow even more this one right here was one of my latest hoya hauls from my friend this is the hoya carnosa freckle splash that is now growing so beautifully it grew all this no i think it grew three of oh no two a set of leaves over here and another one on top and it's looking like it's still growing and i don't want to touch it so yeah it propagated successfully it rooted successfully and i was so happy to see it it's one of the plants or cuttings that I was looking forward to seeing again after being gone because I wasn't sure if it was going to survive or not so what I did basically is I just filled this with like 90% water um, because it was it's like propagating in water but with um, the pond already so I didn't have to move it so as you can see it drank um about 65 to 70 percent of the water that it had and i haven't refilled it yet so it still has about one third of the of the reservoir so that's really good that's another example of how you can propagate directly in pond just add a bunch of water it just saves time you don't have to repot it you know it saves hassle and stress also and this one has a peduncle also that is looking like it's budding i'm not sure but that one is my hoya caudata sumatra and i've chopped this one and the propagation that I have is also there and it's also grown and then another one that I was looking forward on seeing is this clementiarum that's finally growing this one is the um, I don't know what version this is but I got this from Sam's Hoyas with the two leaf right there cutting from the bottom and it's grown three new leaves for me while i was gone so happy to see that so yeah a bunch of new growth that i am excited to show you guys in detail pretty soon so for now that's all there is and oh my god my my hoya Surigawensis is finally showing some colors. I've waited so long for this to happen and I didn't think it was gonna do it for me. So now it is sun stressing beautifully but obviously it's not as beautiful as this one is looking beautifully sun stressed. This one is the Hoya CV Joy Splash and it's not very splashy anymore but 
it's okay it's still very gorgeous i believe yeah that's all you get for now of my hoyas and and so across that plant collection in my bedroom are these plants as well and this is the anthurium serenoi velvet please don't mind my mess behind it and this one is growing well and it's getting bigger this is the newest leaf oh my god it looks so perfect right now look at that yeah definitely a a must have if you want an easy velvety easier than um war queen than queen anthurium but it gives that same look i believe and it's definitely way easier in ambient condition and then at the very top right there we have a very sad and and i think spider mites infested um philodendron serpents right there so i did give it a rinse a couple days ago and i haven't really checked on it just yet but it's looking rough right now so we're gonna have to figure it out and next to it is my philodendron white princess who is also getting some kind of dots on its variegated leaf or some i don't know what that is could be rust um that is common to some philodendrons but yeah this is one of my original philodendrons and i propagated it it from here as you can see the cut right there and it grew two heads which i was really excited about and both heads actually had some very nice variegation as well so i'm still kind of observing what's gonna happen in this plant and it's looking like the newest leaf is a full moon as well it's fully white right there but yeah we'll see it's still a project in progress but right here is still looking lush and fabulous and just super chill this plant is actually flowering oh my god god i just noticed that look at that this is my dischidia russifolia variegata and look at how much light it's getting just that very very small from from that grow light right there and wow it's very happy right now it's got lots of new growths and it's even flowering that is the tiniest flower i've ever seen oh my god it's tiny and white look there is a an open one right there can you even see oh my god it's so tiny but it's right there wow hopefully you can zoom in nope right there wow it's so darn cute but I am glad that this plant is happy. I thought I had to move it. But I left it here. Hoping that it's, you know, because it was growing for a while. So I didn't want to move it. But I really thought the winter season will make it less happy. But that is not the case. It's actually happier than ever with all those blooms. So yeah i am totally totally in for this this plant is just amazing you guys it's such an adorable plant okay last cabinet last section but not least definitely because as you can see um this is my um hoya crimson queen but with the round form that i got from Anne 
my friend Anne with the garden once again from that Hoya haul. And look, it just gave me this cluster of new leaves. Like, so beautifully variegated. Oh my goodness. And I have not repotted this. It stayed in the same substrate it came with, which is mostly um, orchid bark, I believe and it's definitely happy my husband actually kept a reservoir on this one which didn't mind at all i think it was happy for that so i think i'm gonna leave it alone for now until that one's fully hardened and then another one oh my god this plant this is my ceratostema rowii and oh my god this one is blooming so well as well so well as well but yeah it's got some blooms look at that what a gorgeous gorgeous plant i'm so happy this this one is happy in my collection right now oh my god it's got a bunch of it and it's gone bushier also this one i kept in the same moss substrate that it came with this was from equigenera by the way so i kept it in the same substrate and i just added more moss and leka at the bottom and i kept the um, leka part of the as my reservoir i kept it moist for the most part and it's very happy with that and it's getting um, lighting from this Verena light this is just a 10 watt um, Verena light and yeah it's happy with just that and the fan is not even on for the most part actually because I forgot to put it on a it's in a time one that this one doesn't turn on on its own so but it's happy and a lot of the plants in here are very happy as well this is just another propagation of my melanochrysum with the gigas that I added in the same pole and they're both very happy and this one right here is uh, indo Indo Dressleri, which I don't remember where I got this from. Might be um, North Shore Tropicals, actually, because it's still in it's still in a whatever substrate it came with, which is I don't know perlite bark stuff, some kind of soil. And I'm waiting for this new leaf to harden, and I'm going to move it into pond and eventually move it to the other anthurium cabinet that i have so this is basically a um rehab cabinet that i have here which this one is a mainstay in here now this is my um something metallicum oh my goodness i forgot what it's called but it's the one with the bluish tone to it and it's still alive i got this from equigenera and it's still alive so i'm quite happy about that and then down here we have this is the other hoya crimson queen but with the big large leaf and it grew this leaf for me and another update on this is my labesia that is also known as a uh, fish fish bone i think is its common name and yeah this took a long time to grow but it finally the two top leaf that is looking perfect is the leaves that grew under my care but believe me i waited a long time it took months at least six months or whenever I had my um, collaboration with them, I got that one as a freebie. And yeah, what else is here? This is a propagation from my own um, Hoya Bella Leda Bui. And I could add this into my pot, but I think I'm just gonna 
leave it alone because it's happy right now and you know how Bella can be sometimes and here we have my Hoya Lee and it's looking happy and it looks like oh my goodness it looks like it had flowered and I've missed it but it also had a bunch of peduncles so yeah hello and this is another Dishidia and maybe Bia Kansas or maybe Jerry that I have grew from multiple single node cutting and I got this one for free as well I believe or if not like five dollars or something cheap like that but it's growing and it's getting bushy so that's good I have another Dishidia at the back over there I think that is her suta that I am growing from a single probably single node and it's got multiple growth so that's great and another Dishidia down here which is a watermelon I believe and this one has not been easy only I've had a lot of cuttings potted in the same pot but majority of it rotted away but I have a few that stayed alive so I'm grateful for that and then back here is I think that's the Hoya Rana Wences and oh my goodness it's looking like a it's got a new leaf that red one right there and another new leaf that's already been out so another one that I've propagated in directly in pond and then this is the other philodendron strawberry shake that I was telling you about that I moved in this cabinet because it was just not growing but right now it's growing this it grew from another node I believe for some reason and this new node is showing more variegation which is great it's fine i'm finally growing some something from the strawberry shakes and another lee hoya lee over here oh i didn't know that i have two pots i forgot about that but i did propagate my old one that got really root rotted and i chopped it into multiple cuttings and now I have two full pots this one and this one and this one is actually has a bunch of peduncles so yay and that's about it for all the updates you guys and that is it for today's video guys thank you so much for watching and if you did like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell down below so you'll be notified when my future video drops again thank you all so much i appreciate every single one of you and i hope to see you on my next video Bye.